Woody Allen's Decades in Film, a podcast about the incredible filmography of one of the most prolific and most controversial filmmakers of our time. From Red Naxella Studios, A and B in Hong Kong, we are your hosts, William Melvin and Q. Welcome everyone to the eighth episode of uh, What Would He Do, where we discuss Woody Allen's uh, filmography. And this is the, shall I say, this is the first season break of some sorts because this uh, <laughs> season finale rather, because mm-hmm. this is. Woody Allen's final film for his first directorial decade, right? Mm-hmm. So we've uh, we've covered from 1969's Take the Money and Run to 1979's Manhattan, and here is Q to uh, give us the lowdown of the of this very multi-layered film. But let's try to simplify mm-hmm. this for 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 the purposes of this introduction. All right. Uh, so for those of you guys who have uh, or who are first time listeners to this podcast, I mean, the concept of this podcast is that we we watch a Woody Allen movie and uh, it's Williams. Uh, obviously, it's he, he's he's the foremost expert in this podcast. <laughs> and whereas I'm I'm the Woody idiot. Um, so I, I always watch it uh, blind. Yeah. I have no idea what what it is, and uh, so for this movie, it's uh, 1979's Manhattan. This is, I think, one of Woody's most important and most influential pieces, where he plays Isaac, yep. uh, a novelist and comedy writer who's dealing with a recent chaotic divorce, and is now in a relationship with a 17-year-old university student. Yeah, you know, you mentioned it being one of his more most important pieces, yeah. most. In- influential pieces and uh, in today's climate you know it's probably one of his most controversial too so we'll talk about that later uh, the the mm-hmm. intricacies and complexities of this matter but it is a beautiful film and just like you know um, when we just dove straight to interiors last week <laughs> I think you want to dive straight to the oh, meat oh, yeah. and potatoes of this oh, film. Yeah, oh yeah. You know, just right off the I, bat, what do you what do you feel? How do you feel now? We've just finished I, viewing the film minutes ago. Like literally minutes ago. Yeah, so, literally literally shoot. so this is hot <laughs> off the press. I like this film more more at, this did not leave me wanting to kill myself. <laughs> <laughs> as was the last movie the last in a positive movie. way we we we, we yeah, were blown yeah, away yeah. by interiors right it was just like yeah. the, the thing is that you wanted to walk straight into the ocean and, <laughs> <laughs> and, and become sea foam no but <laughs> but for okay so for manhattan uh manhattan is i i was just telling william uh, off screen uh, off air that this felt more like the proto rom com, uh, proto romantic comedy. Just the the montages, just the tableaus. That mm. oh, the tableaus in this movie was amazing. Uh, just the scenes that uh, comprised the whole a uh, film uh, felt like this was exactly the pattern that people and directors and writers were going were going mm-hmm. for uh, in in whenever they would make a romantic comedy. Uh, so yeah, right. I, li- I like this movie, but I don't want to kind of like deplete its depth because I mean, comparing it to the current gen generation uh, romantic comedies, obviously a lot of them are, you know, are just feel good romantic comedies where <laughs> it's all, all, <laughs> all of the romantic, uh, expressions are just meant for, you know, just to give you that romantic feeling. Uh, right, right, right. Whereas this movie deals with a lot of more realistic themes. Like, I mean, it deals with the themes of divorce, deals with uh, yeah. cheating in relationships. And yeah. I think that Woody Allen, from the way that he kind of like dealt with interiors and how that felt super real <laughs> even even though the, the the themes were very heavy i mean it it was very realistic this one felt relatable because yeah. everyone who has ever been in a relationship or has had 
you know, uh, thoughts about being in, in uh, meeting people, meeting new people, having an affair, all of these things happen in real life. And they're not, yeah. he, he didn't romanticize them as much or, or as much as he romanticized New York. <laughs> so, so he, the, 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 the encounters, the dialogue, the friendships, the people felt authentic. They felt genuine. They felt real. Yeah. So, and that's why I liked it. Plus, I mean, it, it's it goes without saying that the aesthetic decisions, the scenes, this, <laughs> if you look at it without dialogue, it's still gonna be <laughs> an, a, a wonderful movie. <laughs> oh, it's still gonna be beautiful, right? Yeah. If you've ever heard the the phrase uh, "every frame a painting," this is one of those <laughs> movies. Yeah. I think yeah. you know. Every frame and considering it's black like and a, white. A, a, yeah, right. You know, you know there, there are no black colors in here. Yeah, yeah, right. And also, of course, when you're when you're doing this as a part of a Woody Allen marathon, this is coming off of uh, interiors. And you're going to feel... You're going to welcome Woody Allen back, you know? She, he, <laughs> he just lightens up the, the, the screen. Yeah, yeah. You know, he's... Like you know, I I was I, I was happy to see Woody again. Like you know, you know yeah. last week we were watching a Woody-less film, uh, and now yeah. he opens it up with his uh, one of his neurotic monologues. You know, when he yeah. was writing the 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 the, the novel, and, and and then you know it opens up with him in the restaurant pretending to smoke. You know, it just like it completely changes everything. I, I'm sure you felt the same way. Like, it, hey, oh, Woody's yeah. back. I, I'm happy that oh, he's oh, back. Oh, oh, yeah. I mean, could you imagine? Could you imagine interiors having that starting monologue? <laughs> it would have been no, a totally Woody different Allen's movie. Thing. <laughs> this is a house in New York, but it's like, it's, it's, it's near a beach. You know, when, when people are in the, you know, they're near a beach, they want to kill themselves or whatever. You just want to walk straight. And yeah. say, Can you imagine that? You know, I'm just like, it's going to yeah. be a... But here it is. It works so well, right? The movie, it's, it's very straightforward. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a story about love. It's a story about relationships. It's a story about friendships. And tightly woven in, 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 in that tapestry are just conversations. I, and that's, I think, the highlight of this movie was just that conversations were meaningful conversations i was just telling william like so as we were streaming this <laughs> the the audio track was normal but the video track was <laughs> catching up <laughs> yeah. but even then i was enjoying the conversations i was I, I was enjoying kind of like the interactions between the characters oh and meryl streep was here <laughs> meryl streep quite here. surprisingly yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah you know he she's one of those supporting roles right he's she's <laughs> yeah. she's not at the front and center of this film mm. but it's just like it just works so well you know it's yeah. it's well acted and you know the, the character is so interesting <laughs> yeah, to just like the, you I, know, Woody Allen wanted to run over the the new girlfriend. <laughs> the I, Woody I, Allen I never, wit is is back in his. Oh yeah! Uh, oh yeah! Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Oh, oh yeah! Movie. For sure. Uh, <laughs> I was I was laughing earlier in the movie that uh, in one of the lines it said that I had an orgasm and my doctor told me it was the wrong kind. <laughs> oh yeah! And you want to know who that is? You want to know who that? that actress was that, that that's a bit player there right yeah that's tisa farrow mia farrow's sister oh really that's yeah interesting. so so uh the first farrow who has actually gotten a role in a woody allen film was not mia it was tisa farrow oh, uh the, the woman who was having a, a the wrong kind of orgasm here, <laughs> right <laughs> <laughs> yeah but i mean Obviously, the comedy and the wit, it's not its not physical comedy anymore. Yeah, that's gone. Much as, that's totally gone. Yeah. Totally gone at this point, yeah. right? Just Woody Allen's presence and just how he acts is physical <laughs> comedy enough, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Even in Even, the delivery and... The, yeah, yeah, of course. And I that's, that's, that's refreshing to me. Um, 
be- especially coming from a heavy movie like uh, Interiors. Yeah. But uh, I think this was a lot easier to digest because uh, more than more than um, Annie Hall, yeah. Annie Hall was just pretty and deep, yeah. and it warrants uh, a rewatch for sure. Yeah. Uh, Manhattan for me kind of hits all of the boxes for something feel good. Yeah. It it yeah. doesn't deliver exactly what modern rom coms do. Like it's all feel good all throughout. Right. <laughs> and it doesn't intend to, right? It's it's exactly, not in the exactly. intention. Yeah, right, right. But but that's how kind of like a normal person like myself would have uh if I were if I had seen this in the cinema, I would have come out of the movie theater happy. And yeah, right. uh, and you know just just they, it was masterfully created and I and I and I say this with such reverence to his filmmaking because right. Right. I I acknowledge that at the time rom coms weren't as popular <laughs> or I, I don't know I don't even know if I don't know if it exists I, yeah, I don't know if it existed. If, if the genre I'm existed yet yeah, right 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 uh, so yeah I mean I liked it. It's it's yeah. it's simple enough, but the, the 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 conversations were you know just great. I, I kind of feel like yeah, I, I kind of feel like if you're introducing Woody Allen to someone, this is the the perfect first film for them, right? Yeah, someone from from today. You know, yes. you know, you sit, you sit him or her down and say, you know, I, let, let's try watching a Woody Allen movie. I want you to watch a Woody Allen movie. I'd show him or her Manhattan like f- first. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. You know, and not to diminish from, not to diminish Manhattan from being one of, uh, being one of his best films. I mean, it it would be a disservice to compare it to modern day love love uh, love story movies because it isn't uh and yeah. the, the 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 relationships that they dealt with were more were far more complicated than that <laughs> I, I was mentioning william while we were watching in the movie that <laughs> i thought <laughs> that woody allen at his so his role is like his this middle-aged uh 40 year old writer <laughs> 42 year old writer. He's 17. I'm older and, than yeah, his father. Girlfriend, <laughs> his girlfriend was 17 years old. Had, oh my god. That that's, that's that's So clearly he was not the loser. <laughs> yeah, he he wasn't. He he's not uh he he's not the nice guy. Again, we yeah, we're, we're again, in this con- yeah. conversation again cuz you know it's like Everyone again. I'm I'm going to repeat the same thing. You know, <laughs> a lot of people today would think that Woody Allen, the Woody Allen character, because he essentially just plays one uh, one character, right? That's mm-hmm, it. Mm-hmm. He's like a he's like a Charlie Chaplin in some sort of way. Like it's always the tramp character, and it, it's <laughs> yeah, it's kind of yeah. like this. It changes the names, but it's it's still that guy. So a lot of people think this guy. He's uh, the guy he's playing in these movies. It, it's the pro, uh, the prototype of those loser nice guy awkward guys he's n- never in this no, film yeah you know if, if anything he projects himself as like this this Humphrey Bogart <laughs> ladies man <laughs> character in this film for some reason and it, 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 it's just it's uh, what do you think of that because you were you were commenting on it while the thing was happening that conversation <laughs> with with uh, Tracy what do you yeah. think? Because I mean, comparing it to like uh, the, I, I think the mo- the most modern uh, movie that I can compare it to is Five Hundred Days of Summer, only because yeah. the setting was pretty much the same. Right. It's it's practically uh, a, a love letter to Woody Allen. That I'm movie sure. Is a, yeah, yeah right, I'm right. sure. I mean, the the shot at the benches. Yeah, the, yeah, the, right. Yeah. The the whole kind of manic. And the, the, those those uh, sequences where it's just music, and right, it's just right, them right, interacting. Right, they have right. they have a lot of that. Yeah. And um, yeah, he he was he's never he's never been a loser in this movie. And it's just so funny that people think that he 
he instigated that whole kind of like stereotype of a yeah. loser. <laughs> <laughs> trying even to in Amy there. Hall, it wasn't the case, right? No, uh, not, even, at all. Yeah, not at all. Before we continue today's discussion, we'd like to invite everyone to follow us on our channels and social media accounts. What Would He Do podcast is available on Spotify, Anchor.fm, and other major streaming platforms. Yes, you can also follow us on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook. All you have to do is visit our homepage at www.williamelvin.com slash what would he do for all our links. Or you can email us and we'd love to have a quick chat with you at what would he do at gmail.com. <laughs> but you know, I, I I told Q that you know it's 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 kind of like an intellectual charm in there, and it's probably true. Um, mm-hmm. It's actually uh, addressed twice in this movie, if you've caught the 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 detail of of that. Mm-hmm. Um, because Mariel Hemingway, uh, Tracy, the Tracy character here, is the mm-hmm. type who would like you know fall in love with her professor or some someone, right? Okay. I you know, she, she's the type, you know, she's a, she's a uni student and she falls in love with a with a intellectually stimulating older man. That's that's mm. basically what happened here. Um yeah. and and you go back to the Diane Keaton character, Mary, uh and one of the one of the best jokes in 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 Woody Allen films is that Mary just keeps on talking high praise of her ex-husband jeremiah you know he's brilliant he's like he opened me up sexually and then you meet the guy (laughs) you meet the guy he's wally sean and and he's like you know he's he's like like, a a short balding guy (laughs) even woody allen even woody allen says like you know i did not expect that i did not expect him to look that way it's just you know, you you were telling me you he this guy opened you up sexually, and 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 you know it's like that. Some younger women would be attracted to an intellectually stimulated older man. That's that's a reality of life. Yeah. It's 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 something that is frowned upon, always been, but it yeah. happened. And yeah. in this in this film, it just gets addressed like that. <laughs> I mean, you were you were expecting Brad Pitt, but <laughs> yeah, I was expecting, you, know, it's like you were expecting like you know someone like someone at least who looks like Michael Murphy, the the Yale character, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. you, you'd expect someone like that, you know. He's like he's he carries himself well, and you get this like you get you actually get this. Wally Sean is like a he's he's like a Woody Allen type of character too you know he's like he seems smart yeah. he seems like a you know he's, he seems like an okay guy but he's like he looks like that and, and that's probably one of my best scenes in this film so how about <laughs> the best scenes later of course we've already mentioned uh, the side cast of the, the supporting characters of this film you've had um, Meryl Streep of course uh, of as, course, of uh, course. as Jill the ex-wife you've mm-hmm. had the uh, Mariel Hemingway, Tracy. Mariel Hemingway is the granddaughter of legendary writer Ernest Hemingway. Probably, you know, when wow. you're casting, when you're Woody Allen and you're casting someone, and you know, he, this is the granddaughter of Ernest Hemingway. I gotta get her, and she looks like that. She's very pretty. Yeah. She's very, very, you know, very, she's very pretty. attractive in this film. Um, of course, you have Diane Keaton. Of in course, her, uh, this is the last film in her five film. Woody Allen run. Of course, we're gonna mm-hmm. see her again. We are also going to see Mariel Hemingway again later on in the uh, in Ooh, the Woody okay. verse. So uh, it's 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 very interesting from here. This film is as as Q said is much more complex than your usual romantic comedy, right? Because mm. it deals with like real uh, real characters in real situations. And uh, let's talk about the the the. <laughs> The underaged elephant in the room. Uh, let's let's talk about the the Mariel Hemingway character Tracy. Uh, of course, this uh, puts the whole thing in a very different light today because you know oh, yeah. the, the attitudes of people have changed. Number one, mm. of course, uh, the power dynamic between an, an older of person course. and a younger of person course. is already you know it's much discussed today. 
And we can say that it was a different time uh, when this movie was made. Um, and of course, the Woody Allen controversy. Uh, he married. It doesn't. Uh, yeah, it doesn't help his case. But the thing is that you know, a lot of people think that he married Sunyi, his uh, present wife. Uh, mm-hmm. When 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 she was eighteen or seventeen, it, it's not the case. He married. Well, uh, he he went into a relationship with Sun Yi mm-hmm. when she was twenty two. So that's oh. that's a very different case. So it's not yeah, yeah. you know. But people can conflate these things and you know build as yeah. as Woody Allen says. It's a it's a whole industry about this controversy now. But my opinion of this is that the Isaac and Tracy relationship was mm-hmm. not presented as an ideal in this film it's not as if not you know they're they're, yeah, they're telling all. people that you know uh this is a this is an oh, this is an okay thing to do. It, it, it's it's not like that and i think the punch of this film when you get to the ending is that a 42 year old man still doesn't still doesn't have an idea a clue of what relationships and love is supposed to be and this girl who just turned 18 already has a more mature things yeah. of uh, 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 you know a more mature way of viewing things and, and, and he does it's beautiful yeah and i mean it it, it really is uh it, it i mean in the film he it came from him like he has a line there stop being mature <laughs> yeah, stop being mature <laughs> stop we're being not mature. supposed to be mature here <laughs> It's if if anything, this was actually uh, uh, you as uh, I as a viewer uh, or us, we were we were being chided uh, as kind of like oh I have a I have a young girlfriend. This is kind of like a testament to my virility, and yeah, it was yeah. it was more like that, like as a as a kind of like a joke to the toxic masculinity as as we call right. it right now. Right, 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 right. I love her portrayal of Tracy because it felt so pure and mm-hmm. innocent and uh That's true. she she has that look that very <laughs> i don't i don't know what how to describe it she has she has that very teenage look <laughs> and even even at at 18 when i think when when she was when this movie was when shot she was... uh she sounded much y- younger yeah, than, that... than than she actually was Right. And I think that kind of added to the discomfort seeing them together, like matching them up together, especially that uh, they had scenes together in in bed. Yeah, right, right, right. right, 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 right. <laughs> so it kind of it kind of had that discomforting uh, look, but at the same time, it was it was being it wasn't it wasn't being highlighted as something yeah. Yeah. to be proud of. Right, right. You know, and and uh, you know how movies can sexualize a character, right? Sure. I did not see that at all with the portrayal no. of Tracy. No, not here. at all. Yeah, it's 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 it was it was handled tastefully. You know, mm. as we said, we're going back to the theme here. The theme here is that Isaac Davis wanted to him, wanted himself to feel better. And you know, just to make him feel better, he would he would be in a relationship with a with, with a seventeen year old woman. Which uh, I don't know if I've I've mentioned this before. In New York, the legal age is seventeen. So <laughs> this is you know, and and it's still uncomfortable, uh, of course. Yeah. Until yeah. this time, it still is. It still is. It, is, is it, uh, but it's still seventeen. It's still seventeen. It's still seventeen. <laughs> so it's like it's 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 very it's a very difficult thing to talk about but you know it's just to get this out in the uh, out in the open because i hear this a lot and i read about yeah. this a lot you know um a lot of people who want to unfairly judge woody for a uh, for an accusation that was never proven um yeah. would use this film as a you know as as quote unquote as proof that the, yeah. yeah you know that that he has this this tendency well number one falling in love or 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 getting attracted to a grown 17 year old woman who looks like that and a seven seven year old girl is a very different thing that is not that is not on the same level people would judge artists for for what they wrote or or what they what what they did uh, uh, as a form of fiction that's kind of unfair so it's like the it's it's kind of unfair for us to to 
use this as a reference or a point of discussion for anything. Let's stick to the facts and let's stick to what what is available. And uh, you know, let I, I just want to ad- want to address that and uh, yeah. because that's a very big part of discussing this film. If you're enjoying our discussion, another perfect companion for your Woody Allen film marathons is the Woody Allen Pages podcast at www.woodyallenpages.com. It's a great resource for film-by-film details that would surely add to your Woody Allen viewing experience. So check them out! Moving away from that, I think their relationship was... I mean, obviously, they were in a grown-up relationship. Obviously, they were having sex. Obviously, yeah, right. You know, and uh, <laughs> it, I mean, it adds to the discomfort that she was yeah, still right, in high right, school. Right, 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 right. <laughs> so, so, I mean, obviously, uh, these 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 themes, even at, even I guess at the time that it was made, uh, it wasn't meant to again. It wasn't meant to glorify that sort of setup, that sort of relationship. But even then, this doesn't mean that these things don't happen. I mean, I've yeah, I've had it still my happens uh, now. Yeah, yeah, I've had. <laughs> I mean, I I had a boss early on in my career who had, and he was just a tad younger than <laughs> Woody Allen was at in in this portrayal. In this he film. was so it's like forty. I think he was 41? thirty. Yeah, he, no, no, no. He was thirty eight. Uh, and yeah, his yeah, girlfriend his girlfriend was 18 <laughs> his yeah, girlfriend was right. my batchmate <laughs> in school <laughs> and how do you navigate that how do you you can't you can't it i mean you can't fault them for falling in love you can't what, say what a that rock star <laughs> what a rock star oh, yeah, exa- exactly like rock exactly. stars do this thing <laughs> and, and you, you really i mean when you see them together you, you don't make that judgment you can't say that their love isn't real that he's just yeah, using yeah, her for yeah, you know yeah. for for sex yeah. or whatever so could be the could be the case but you can't you know you can't just exactly. like you can, you go can't, out you there and say it. like hey you <laughs> you're just doing this be- because an 18 year old you know you, you, we've agreed as a society that 18 years old is like she's old enough you know yeah <laughs> and you, you have to trust the these thing. These exactly. girls for for the decisions that they make, you know, they might make yeah. some mistakes or not, but these are things that they have to handle because you know a society will look at them as a uh, as a legally aged person. Exactly. So yeah, exactly. yeah it's 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 uncomfortable. <laughs> Again, we're gonna go back to like you know it 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 still is uh, and it should be, but I don't think this film is a is an advertisement. For, for that for middle aged people to <laughs> to, to, to pursue you know, underage women <laughs> yeah you know you should try 17 years old and it's not like that right? no no not at all yeah <laughs> not at all. and and i mean it's good that you highlighted that none of the women here were overly sexualized if 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 anything i think bananas was was the culprit oh, yeah. over sexualizing yeah, yeah 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 if anything <laughs> even more so than everything you always wanted to know about yeah, sex yeah, right yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> but but here i mean everything everything was very 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 tastefully done uh all yeah. of the bed scenes and all of the things that suggested sex was done in silhouette was done in yeah right, right, right. <laughs> there were there were scenes here that was just so beautiful even though the the screen was entirely black and the, that's actually you, you, I know the scenes that you were referring to were the planetarium scenes, right? That's the visual peak of this movie for yeah, me. Yeah, the yeah. The planetarium scene is like one of the best scenes you could ever see in a Woody Allen in the Woody mm. Allen this, uh, mm. filmography, mm. right? Mm. Um, and of course, the at the core of this film is the Diane Keaton Woody Allen uh, repartee. Of the, course, they of just course. look so electric together. Yeah. It just, you they're, know, you they're... could just watch these two people talk. Yeah. And I would yeah. pay, right? You know, if, <laughs> you know what? If I was a film producer, if I was this, like, re, if I had, what, like 15 to 20 million US dollars to spare, and <laughs> we both know that we don't, right? <laughs> yes. You know what? I would give. 75% of my life savings to convince Woody 
to just do one final film with an old Woody Allen and an old Diane Keaton. Please, just, just give it to us, right? There's, there, there are like, like you know, two hundred fifty thousand people who would watch that film. Let's let's do that. Have you seen the movie, uh, the series of movies at least, uh, uh, the, of Before Sunset? Yeah, 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 right, right. Yeah. I would pay for for a before, <laughs> <laughs> for for a before, uh, w- before whatever style <laughs> one movie with with Woody and it's Diane. You know, talking. Yeah, you know, it's just like them sitting on a bench looking at the sunset. Give me that for two hours. I would gladly pay full price for that thing. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, please, yeah, Woody. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, I, and I think for for this movie, I mean, yeah, I mean that's their 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 banter, their their chemistry is always just energizing and electric <laughs> and great, and you know, you can't. But this movie kind of like deals with a lot of like connections, you know, uh, and how these connections and the struggle to connect with someone. That that uh, so somewhere uh, in the middle of the movie, Diane Keaton is like trying, struggling with her, with herself and trying to find uh, a real connection with uh, with Yale's character. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. She say that with such contempt. Yale, yeah. because <laughs> <laughs> he's six years old. <laughs> Come on. Um, we'll get there. We'll get to that <laughs> moment. <laughs> but but I mean, it, it's just missed connections this this can be an ad for craigslist you know missed connections yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because this this just deals and it deals with that theme so elegantly that that you can you can visibly see the people trying to connect to each other woody allen's character uh, even though he, he he willfully rejects uh Mary at the start uh, when when they first meet each other yeah. she was like <laughs> <laughs> it's it's almost a show that it, it it was he was it was him kind of like laying it on thick to show Tracy <laughs> that he wasn't interested <laughs> yeah right. she's a pseudo intellectual you know, yeah. if, if, if she speaks about Bergman once again I'm gonna punch her. <laughs> <laughs> But it, it, it's it's that, and you see, and you see the actual connections getting severed, getting connected, getting reconnected, you know. And it, it's nice to see that, it's to see that interplay between real characters, not made up characters. Right, and every right. single one of these characters felt so real, even even as ridiculous as uh, Meryl Streep's characters her being his ex-wife who's a lesbian yeah right <laughs> you know <laughs> and 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 i think that's also friends homage to this movie oh yeah that, With, uh, well friends is very new york you know the, like, the 90s sitcoms lifted a lot from woody allen you know, from sure, seinfeld yeah, I'm sure, I'm to sure. uh friends um <laughs> well we have to talk about that 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 meryl streep character because you know I, <laughs> there's this you remember this point when they uh, when they actually saw the book on sale and they bought <laughs> one copy, and then they were like, you know, there's like, oh, how about this one? Uh, it says that you had sex with with, with her and another woman. Like, <laughs> and, and, and Woody was like, well, I didn't want to be a bad sport. You know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, that's what she wanted. <laughs> yeah, that's what she wanted. I, I didn't want to be a bad sport or whatever. But the, and then it hits him, you know, when when, when yeah. suddenly when Jill tries to you know describe him as he's he's narcissistic he fears <laughs> death but it's actually just near narcissism it just hits him hard and 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 that's another proof that you know he's not writing this character to be you know to be a likable one or, or something yeah exactly <laughs> I like that I like that line where he was like oh I wrote some nice things about you and he was like, like what like, <laughs> like, you cry whenever you see Gone with the Wind Gone with the Wind <laughs> Oh, no. oh man, the, 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 such such uh, uh, the lines in this movie are so carefully crafted. I I, I oh, yeah. love 
uh, the 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 jokes in here so much because he's back with his jokes here, right? Yeah. Totally missing from interiors, <laughs> not one bit. <laughs> but you know, it's back here, and it's so re- refreshing. And yeah. um, you know, he's. Uh, I told you that one of my favorite scenes in all of Woody Allen's filmography mm-hmm. is that scene where he was arguing with uh, Yale. In the science room with oh, the skeleton right, in right, there, right, right. and yeah, it's yeah, like yeah, you know yeah. when, when, when you know there's this there's this brilliant staging of the scene where it starts <laughs> you know with a with a skeleton in the middle and he walks yeah. forward and so it's a, it's a parallel of the skeleton and and himself <laughs> on the foreground right it's and then he actually addresses it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. and then it's, it's like you know when I, when I you know someday you and I are becoming are, are gonna become like this, and when I become like this, I want to be well thought of, and it's like <laughs> such a such a wonderful scene, and I just learned when I uh, read the notes uh, coming from our friend William Miller, uh, mm-hmm. the the free books that he gave us. Uh, that that scene was unplanned. It was improvised. Oh really? Wow! Because they saw the the, the skeleton yeah. in there, and Woody just thought that would be funny. Let's do that. <laughs> so That's, it's amazing. Like, That's it, amazing. It's it's, it's amazing. so amazing. As I said, this is peak Woody Allen. Peak Woody Allen, meaning you know he at this point he was one of uh, the 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 <laughs> filmmaker elite in yeah. uh, America, and uh, <laughs> of course while we're on the subject, I we're talking about that. Yale now. Uh, yeah. No, I, what is it? I remember that that line that he that he said that yeah he, when he, when Yale was stark raving mad already, he was like, "You're so self righteous, you know." I mean, we're just people. We're just people. <laughs> we're just we're human just beings. Human we're people. You think you're God? And then he, he replies, with, "Well, I gotta model myself after someone." After <laughs> someone. That's just so. When I was listening to our uh, Annie Hall uh, episode, I think we did not give enough credit to his co-writer in this one, Marshall Brickman. He's back. Uh, so Annie Hall and Manhattan were actually co-written by Marshall Brickman and oh. Woody Allen. And, uh, you know, uh, the, the, there's a lot of it in here. You know, the, maybe yeah. that's one of the reasons why those two films are are considered two of his best ones. Because, you know, he had mm-hmm. another, uh, you know, he had another brilliant writer writing with him. Um, but exactly. it's just so... Well, again, while we're on the subject, let's talk about Yale. Who's the... <laughs> I think he's the most punchable character in this oh, yeah. <laughs> played brilliantly by Michael Murphy, right? Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> and I think I think for he he's he's a perfect model for a lot of the insecure, undecisive <laughs> male characters, you know, that that are always uh, against the the typical rom com protagonist. Because Looks like he, a decent guy. But, you know, yeah, yeah, like... yeah. <laughs> he was cast so perfectly, and he, the way that he, the, the, you know, his character is eff- effective because you feel things that you want to do to him. <laughs> that, you want to punch him. <laughs> you yeah, because. He's he's yeah his character was just uh, so annoying. <laughs> As you said, and, he's and, like he's like six years old, you know. I, yeah, yeah. I yeah, liked yeah. her first. Just <laughs> yeah, like I mean, we're talking about a pen here, you know. We're talking about a piece of bubble gum or something. You know? what, what are you six? What are you dibs on my girl? <laughs> <laughs> well, this also shows because you know, um, Woody would always say after. Uh, after Sleeper, uh, mm-hmm. after Diane Keaton was introduced to his uh, uh, film writing and directing, mm-hmm. he wrote always from the perspective of women. And mm. you could see that uh, in this film too. Because, you know, it presents these two men, uh, Yale and Ike, uh, Woody yeah. and Michael Murphy, as two, you know, indecisive, immature guys. Yeah, yeah. And, and and you know the the most mature perspective here is actually Tracy, Mariel Hemingway, and so yeah. it's probably one of the th- those things where he was like you know you, he was writing from the perspective of uh, a woman, well, well written, a well written piece here. Uh, I, I I think we we can both agree uh, that this 
deserves to be on the top spot of people's uh, favorite Woody Allen. I agree. I agree. Uh, uh, films. Uh, if you watch this movie without audio, and if you listen to it as an audio book, they can stand on their own. Oh yeah, right. They can stand on right. their own. Uh, and and that's just a testament as to how beautiful this movie is, because separating those elements from an actual movie, they, you 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 understand how just uh, how powerful and how beautiful and and what kind of a uh, an amazing movie this is because because those two elements that shouldn't be separated in, in the film yeah. can be separated in can, this movie. can stand on their own <laughs> yeah, respective they can they can uh, fields right yeah. and i remember you, you you when we were watching the film and i am not surprised at all because you know i'm a writer so the first uh the first elements that i would fawn over are the writing just, just elements the lines. right yeah, the, yeah, yeah, the yeah, written element you know the, the the things and you would always notice the the visual side of things oh yeah yeah, and yeah. no I, we, we talked about that scene <laughs> where you know they the four of the the ma- major characters yeah, the are characters. walking together and, and, yeah and this so. is a this is one of the I, I think this is one of the iconic scenes in the movie in where film. yeah right. yeah uh where uh so it shows just four of them walking down the street uh michael murphy's character uh, so it's yale it's um mary it's isaac and tracy all walking yeah. in a, in one line not one line like <laughs> in a line <laughs> but they were they were walking <laughs> side by side <laughs> um and you notice uh that uh, michael murphy's uh, so yale and uh mary's attire they're they're the way that they their, their costume are totally opposite from each other so yeah. <laughs> and so it just presents some sort of like weird contrasts between them immediately kind of like see oh these things kind of kind of won't work out i guess yeah, that's how right, i interpreted right. it like because yale's character and they were they were exactly opposite like right. yale yale's costume and uh mary's costume because she was wearing shades while he mm. was wearing glasses his blazer was white with a with a dark shirt and then yeah. her her blazer was black with a white shirt so it's, it's yeah. a lot of that yeah, right those those things and then the contrast between obviously woody allen's 40 year old and tracy's 17 year old <laughs> characters it's just it's just beautiful and then if you notice like down the line whenever you'd see the pairings together like woody allen's character and mary's character uh, uh and um diane keaton's character mary uh they would be dressed alike and i think that sort of pairing that sort of uh costuming is also being uh, done in present day because a lot of the Korean dramas, a lot of the Korean films, Ooh. if you if you see that, so yeah. you 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 notice these things when at the start of, for example, like uh, uh, a a show, so when they were still building up these characters, you, they'd show them, uh, they'd show separate uh, love interests, not coordinating their outfits, and then by the middle and end of the film you'd see that they they all all of their costume all of their looks are always coordinated with each other yeah it's, it's, it, they're gelling together before we continue today's discussion we'd like to invite everyone to follow us on our channels and social media accounts what would you do podcast is available on spotify anchor.fm and other major streaming platforms yes you can also follow us on instagram twitter youtube and facebook all you have to do is visit our homepage at www.williamelvin.com slash what would you do for all our links. Or you can email us and we'd love to have a quick chat with you at what would you do at gmail.com. Just before we we end this discussion about Manhattan, mm-hmm. because uh, I, I think we've covered all the bases for this film. <laughs> yeah, most uh, of except the Except for, 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 for one um for one thing, because I remember, uh, I am a uh, I, I study a lot of filmmaking now, because like I I, I 
I've begun to do my own films, and the Q is starring in one of them. Uh, oh and no! <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure we're gonna let our Woody Allen viewers uh, see that film. But yeah, it's a. Uh, you know, you, you study a lot, and uh, I came across this uh, um, this genre of mm -hmm. indie movies, of indie filmmaking called mumblecore. Um, mumblecore, wow. Okay. Mumblecore. Uh, originally, it was trying to. Uh, it, it was used as a. You know, it, it's it's a it's a term to ridicule the these kinds of films. But then the movement, like most of the filmmakers, just embraced it as, hey, we're doing this. We're doing mumblecore, which yeah. is um, people just seemingly talking to each other at random. Right? Okay. So if you've, if you've seen, and I'm, I, I think some Filipino movies would do these too. Uh, if, for example, like things like Before Sunset, uh, yeah. There's there's this movie in the Philippines uh, called that thing called Tadhana, which is that yeah, thing yeah, called yeah, fate yeah. when you yeah. translate it, and it's it's about two people just talking to each other, you know, on on, yeah, on a yeah. on a road on trip, a trip to Sagada or something. Yeah. Um, yeah. If that wasn't that well produced and that glossy feeling over there it would have been a mumblecore movie because like a mumblecore movie would be characterized as a low budget production about you know people seemingly talking to each other like how people would talk to each other in real life mm. and one of the films that are uh, given yeah. as a direct influence to this genre was actually Manhattan and I was surprised because um, uh, I remember Manhattan not being a mumblecore movie, but you know, seeing it again now, it's just like okay, I get the elements of that. You yeah. know, you have people talking to each other. Uh, you have a lot of dialogue that doesn't really serve the plot. Yeah. But it's 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 such a it's such an interesting thing to hear, and it adds to their characters and all. Yeah. And uh, looking at mumblecore films, or at least like the uh, many of them. Uh, uh, one thing I could say is that it's a tricky thing to pull off because in order for this kind of impact to be made, you've ha mm -hmm. you have to have a lot of really good actors playing the roles. You have to have a Meryl Streep in there. You have to have a Diane Keaton in there, or Michael Murphy in there. Even yeah. Emily, the the wife of uh, of Michael Murphy, and Byrne is like you know these are all great actors. Even yeah. Woody himself, you know, he wouldn't call himself a great actor because he, we just we just see him playing one role essentially. But th the ending of this film, you know, that smirk, uh, you know, mm. that 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 humiliated that, smile that he was able to pull off yeah. that's a sign of a good end. actor you know it's like it's yeah. th th that's that's a very good performance so again woody allen if he doesn't consider himself as a as a good actor, good actor. he's he's a very much he's very much a charismatic presence on screen at least sure yeah i agree and i think for the mumblecore films you know it, it the the trick here is that they usually get unknown amateur actors and that's kind of like a very very difficult thing to pull off and i understand yeah. the the influence of that but that's one of the most glaring things i've seen watching this movie again is that for these seemingly random things to work you've ha you you just have to have the right Guys, mix of characters. The roles yeah, yeah, yeah. Of and I think I think uh, a lot of it is also due to the fact that uh, for for because mumblecore or the thing I like about these types of films is that uh, conversations, even uh, I mean, a lot of people don't see how much it impacts kind of like intimacy uh, mm. that. It gives you the viewer a feeling of eavesdropping into private conversations, and yeah. because that's such an integral part of this type of movie, you need for their characters not only to be great actors, but to have a chemistry just that 
you'll just be taken away and you know you 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 won't you won't mind watching two people <laughs> just talking yeah. you know yeah. because because just their 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 chemistry their electricity is just so so tangible that you know it's it's exhilarating and it's great to hear and this movie this movie just delivers that i mean i think any any movie with woody allen and diane oh, yeah. keaton <laughs> just talking is already a win for me <laughs> yeah. you, you know what please let's raise 20 million US dollars <laughs> so we can call woody allen up you know what yeah. we have a gift for you just like yeah. you don't have to do much else put a camera and just talk to diane keaton you know a, a 90 yeah, plus there's... year old diane uh, a 90 plus year old woody allen and a uh, however old diane keaton is today you know we just you know, want to you... see that you, you guys don't even have to have a script. Just talk. Yeah, right film. Just, like, <laughs> just sit there. <laughs> we'd, sit there. We'd watch an hour and 30 minutes, <laughs> two hours of that. You know, it's like, come on. Just. Yeah. yeah that that, that would that, be that, like. Oh. That would be something. That would be something. That would be something, <laughs> right? And that is the last movie of uh, this decade for Woody Allen. That's a Manhattan. Mm -hmm. uh, again, well. Uh, I think it's a perfect thing to to end this uh, podcast with with, <laughs> with that, that decade and the last line of this film from Mariel Hemingway. Not everyone gets corrupted. Not everybody gets corrupted. You have to have a little faith in people. And you that's have to have a little faith in people. That's such a, a powerful that line. Hard. Yeah. yeah. And then Woody Allen just ends it with like a you know a defeated smile of, or, or some yeah. sort. It's just that this is a beautiful movie, and that was Woody Allen's first decade. So next week, we are going to have a little chat about the first, I think, eight films that eight we've films. seen. And uh, we are going <laughs> that, to... That roller coaster of the first eight oh, films yeah, of Woody Allen. Right. <laughs> right. And, and, and we will talk about how uh, that first movie can affect the next decade of Woody Allen's uh, directorial and uh, screenwriting career. Uh, the 1980s is another brilliant set of movies from, from Woody Can't Allen. Wait. And, and uh, we're going to have a little recap of 1969 to 1979 next week here on What Would He Do? That was today's episode of Woody Allen's Decades in Film, a podcast about the incredible filmography of one of the most prolific and most controversial filmmakers of our time. Join us again next week for another deep dive on the art of Woody Allen. <laughs>